ladies and gentlemen and everyone in between how's it going so in this video i'm going to talk about one year of yoga what i've learned what i've struggled with and whatever let's get right into it last week if this is all working properly and i'm gonna do my editing properly like a person that edits their videos when she records them then i spoke about one year of meditation last week so if you haven't seen that video yet check it out and then come back here and we can talk about the yoga part or you can watch this one first and then go over and watch the meditation part because the beautiful thing about yoga and meditation is that it goes together it's like peanut butter and jelly it's like pineapple on pizza. Now that's like stuff that we could argue then a lot of people would say that's horrible. So what's something that everyone thinks that's um that's a great fit? Ah, like a like a pot and a lid, right? Or yin and yang, you know? If you have more creative ideas than me, just drop it in the comments below and, and give me some inspiration so next time when I do a YouTube video I'm a bit more eloquent. One year of yoga. As, as probably we all know, we live in 2021 right now, and there is a global and there is a global pandemic happening. And the thing is that I I've been wanting to do yoga for a while now because I've been struggling mentally and I've been mentally unstable and whatever. And people have been like, "Yoga changed my life. Yoga is so good for you. If you want to feel better." <laughs> If you want to feel better, you should do yoga, blah, 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 blah. And I was like, yeah, I mean, maybe for you, but it's not for me. It's not for everyone. You know, like I'm gonna do my own thing. And I did. There was a part in me that always wanted to do it. And I went to one yoga class like four years ago. Everyone was like really good, like really freaking good. And it was really freaking difficult. It was probably like a advanced yoga class or whatever. It was... Pfft. I don't know what 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 they were doing, but they were they were so like strong and flexible, and I just got frustrated. I got so freaking frustrated. So here I am, like a couple hundred years later, talking about doing yoga. And it's funny because I didn't start yoga because I wanted to be healthier or like fitter or like you know I did it for mental health reasons. So me and my ex partner that has been mentioned like in every freaking video now, I love you, you're amazing. We were like struggling because our relationship was not really healthy and we had like this like push pull relationship. His issues triggered me and my insecurities and my issues fed his insecurities. Anyway, it was amazing because it forced me to see my own pain and see my insecurities, reflect on them and seek help. And in this case, yoga was my help. So I used yoga for mental health reasons rather than physical reasons. I started doing yoga last March when I was living in New Zealand and New Zealand went into the first lockdown ever. Yeah, yeah, that's correct. That's correct. I was just like checking if I just did a short uh, fact check, but it was right. It was right. Is it right or is it wrong? I can't go on. I can't go on. You say yes or even no. I don't know how. I don't know the lyrics. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, um, that's when I started doing yoga because at that time I was frustrated. I was depressed. I was emotional. I was unstable. Me and my ex just like we broke up and then got back together and because of the fact that we broke up before I had big time trust issues and I was just really vulnerable and insecure and I was like this didn't work the first time why should it work now and I mean I mean here I am single as a Pringle it didn't work out but I mean um I, would, I don't want to say that my insecurities were right or anything. No, when my insecurities got triggered because of our relationship we had to each other and our past, I just typed stuff into YouTube. I was reading a book. It was called The Body Keeps the Score. It was talking about how trauma is remembered in your body. I'm going to make another video about that eventually. Therefore, I thought maybe I can find movement medicine and this is a quote from someone i will get to later maybe i can find a physical thing in which i can process my trauma in which i can process my depression in which i can 
process my anxiety or whatever. You know, I thought back about everything and I was already meditating and I was like, you know what? Like everyone's always talking about how great yoga is and how you connect body and mind doing yoga, blah, 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 blah. When I was a cheerleader back in the old days and I would do stretching, I sometimes wanted to cry. And then I spoke to people that were doing yoga and they told me as well that so many times they would cry when they did yoga. So I uh, did the research and I googled why do people cry during yoga and a lot of people were talking about how yoga releases old trauma and old pain and that went really well together with the book I was reading in which the author was saying how body and mind is connected and how there's memory in the muscles of trauma and all that fun stuff. Afterwards, I decided starting yoga. So I started searching up yoga to cry or yoga to feel your emotions. And then there was a couple exercises you could do. And there was also chakra yoga because I was into the whole like meditation and Zen type of stuff. I was like, yeah, that sounds cool. Like I want to get all the chakras going. And then slowly I found more videos and then struggled with my ex again. And I felt depressed. So I just typed in yoga for depression and that's when I found this amazing freaking person and I did a whole YouTube video just about her but I haven't edited yet so it's gonna come out after this yoga with Adrian my heroine such an amazing inspiring woman women like woohoo she great like I'm telling you she great so I found yoga with Adrian and that's when my journey started because Yoga with Adrienne was a YouTube channel that helped me to freaking keep going. She wasn't like those typical yoga trainers that would just get on my nerves and would be like, Hi, let's do some yoga and please like and subscribe and order my books and order my merch. Yoga with Adrienne was just chill and it was precise. One day I felt anxious, one day I felt lonely, one day I felt insecure, and everything I needed, there was a yoga with Adrian for. And I don't know if I would have fallen in love with yoga like that if it wasn't for yoga with Adrian. And the, and the beautiful part was that it was online. It was virtual, no one was there. I could do yoga literally in my own room. I could hide myself, lock myself away, there was no one to judge, and it was just me, myself, and Adrian. And the beautiful thing too was that she would always talk about how many people were doing yoga with me at the same time and I was just like there's so many other people right now practicing the same thing talking out the same mantra trying to achieve the same stuff as I am and all of a sudden you are alone in your room but you're not alone at all and you feel connected with everyone in this freaking world and you're just like we're all one like this is amazing I'm really really grateful for finding this YouTube channel because honestly it changed my life. I really thought four years ago, whatever, when I did that one yoga class, that was it. Like I felt not good enough and I felt like people were staring at me. And I know that's like one of those things when you're, when you're doing classes, like that's my own insecurity and no one really cares about me. I'm just, I'm just a person. I'm just a kid, but doing yoga, in your own room, in your own personal space, in your own safe space, it just hit me on a whole different level. Because if you wanna process trauma that's in your body, you don't necessarily wanna hang out with 30 other people that are trying to achieve the same thing. So that was really inspiring and it helped me through all my ups and downs when me and my ex broke up once again and for good. I mean, at least for now. When we broke up, I was obviously so heartbroken and my trust was broken. All my fears became true. So that was hard. When I was in New Zealand. I had like one friend. She left the country and moved back to the UK. And I was completely by myself. I had no work visa. I had no home. I had no money. And I had a van that no one wanted to buy. And I was freaking out because I put myself in this codependent relationship and gave up everything I had. And there I was freaking effed, you know, and that was not cool. But that led me to so much freaking growth because you know what? I rose like a phoenix and I survived. Like, look at me here. I'm living with my mom again. I'm 23 years old. I don't have a job anymore. 
and I'm back in Germany and all my unresolved trauma is coming back. Uh, anyway, you know, like, look at me now. I survived. I'm stronger. I know I could do it. You know, I was so insecure and I was like, I, I, I'm not going to survive this. But I did. And one thing that helped me survive was yoga. I would do yoga for heartbreak. And oh my god, my heart was aching so much. It hurt so much. But just listening to someone else telling me I'm not alone and doing all this movement medicine, like Adrian calls it, was just so freaking healing. And then adding meditation to the yoga or yoga to the meditation or doing breath work just, just, just was so magical. And obviously there was days when I was pissed off and I didn't want to do it. But you know what? There is yoga for when you're angry. There is yoga for everything. When you feel sick, when you're on your period, when you feel down, when you feel low energy. There's really yoga for every freaking mood that you can possibly be in. However, I also completely, I completely understand if you need a break. I'm not telling you to be perfect every day. I'm not telling you to perform. You're doing this for your health, for your wealth, for your mindset, for everything, for your own happiness. You're doing this for yourself. So you know your body best and you will get to know your body even more when you start doing yoga. And you will get to know when you should start and when you should stop. And after you took a few breaks, you can come back to it with new energy, with a new refilled mindset, you know, it's okay to have a little fallbacks and it's okay to take breaks because nobody's perfect. And that's the beauty in life. So just saying, sometimes I would do yoga at 6 a.m., 4 a.m., 2 a.m., 1 a.m., whatever, like crazy ass times. And you know what? It felt freaking great. So whatever you're struggling with, whatever you're feeling, there's probably some sort of yoga class that you could do on YouTube for free right now. And I'm so grateful about that because it showed me how strong I am, how amazing I am, how beautiful I am, and that I'm not alone no matter how freaking alone I feel. And that's so freaking valid. When I moved back to Auckland, I made new friends and I met amazing people. But the yoga with Adrian was always with me. Now I'm back in my home country and I'm struggling once again, but you know what? It's okay to struggle. All the struggle in my life always made me stronger and always made me grow. And it's normal to have down phases and up phases because otherwise life would be freaking boring and you would stagnate. You need the ups and downs to grow. <laughs> so yeah, that's uh, one year of doing yoga. It was so beautiful. I actually did not cry a lot and I didn't cry during class either. I feel like doing yoga for a year, my body changed. I'm more present. I'm eating healthier. I feel my body more. I feel parts of my body that I was never really aware of. And I feel how my pain and my suffering is showing in my body physically. And that's what everyone always told me, how yoga connects body and soul. But it's such a difference from experiencing it yourself than having everyone like telling you how great it is. It's, it's been amazing. I am a very emotional person, very sensitive. I can get hurt very easily. For some freaking reason, doing yoga and meditating almost every day for a year really made me freaking strong. And you're listening to this because there is a part of you that gets inspired. There is a part of you that wants that too. And we're all on the same journey. I'm not better or less than you, we're the same. And I want you to try it out. You might think it's not for you and you might like feel embarrassed or whatever at the first time, but I think it could help you a lot. If this is lighting up a little spark in you, then this might be for you. And these words were needed to be heard by you. There is a reason why you clicked on this video, why you listened to me for, I don't know, well, how long have I been talking now? 20 minutes? It's not easy to show up every day. It's not easy to put in the work. It's not easy to face your demons, but it is life-changing. And the best things in life 
are not easy. Do me a favor and do one thing for you today. Rest for five minutes, close your eyes and just be present. Or try out some yoga. Whatever it is, do something that is for you and only you. Because you're fucking strong. You're so strong. And so am I. Thank you so much for listening. Make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel because Kathy needs to find a job and is basically homeless and poor. And you can help me surviving by subscribing to my YouTube channel and hitting that like button. Thank you. Oh.